The two factors to be considered in any act of will are the motive and the driving force. Driving force is determined by our more or less permanent makeup. The motive is our momentary goal. The motive is a momentary impulse which motivates our characterological disposition to action. This video will examine the four moral levels of motive. Moral motive levels are egotism, moral authority, moral insight, conceptual intuition. The motives of morality are concepts and mental pictures. Some ethicists believe feeling can be a motive for moral behavior. But only the mental picture of a future feeling, but not the feeling itself, can act on my characterological disposition. For in the moment of action, the feeling itself does not yet exist. It has first to be produced by the action. The principle of producing the greatest amount of pleasure for oneself through one's action, individual happiness, is called egoism. This individual happiness is sought by thinking ruthlessly only of one's own good, even at the cost of the happiness of others, pure egoism. Egoists may promote the good of others solely because they expect to gain from it indirectly. Or because one fears endangering one's own interests if others are injured, morality of prudence. The particular content of egoistical principles of morality depend on what mental pictures we form of our own happiness. We will determine our egotistical striving according to what we regard as good in life. Luxury, hope of happiness, deliverance from evil, etc. What kind of a house do you want to live in? Do you want to be a millionaire? What kind of a business do you want to have? Do you want more success? Do you know this secret gives you everything you want? So what is the secret? Turns out you've heard it before. They call it the law of attraction. Your thoughts and your feelings create your reality. Another motive is the purely conceptual content of actions. This content refers to an action based on a system of moral principles. These moral principles in the form of abstract concepts can regulate ethical conduct without one bothering about their origin. We simply feel that submitting to a moral concept in the form of a commandment is a moral necessity. We leave the establishing of this moral necessity to whoever demands our moral submission. Submission to the moral authority that we acknowledge, head of family, the state, social custom, authority of the church, divine revelation. Why do some Christians vehemently defend the public display of the Ten Commandments? Well, you see, Christians would see it as a, an eroding away of their symbol, the pictures their moral values. Well, you know, many Christians see the removal of the Ten Commandments as something detrimental to society itself, don't they? To know that they're there and to know that the Ten Commandments are a symbol of the guiding hand of God in the affairs of mankind, of the nation, and of their families. That's, that's the key. And that's why it's, it's a, it, those who want to see them continue to be displayed are so anxious that they continue, to, you know, the tradition we've had in this country uh, continue. Another instance of moral authority is when the command does not come from an external authority, but from within ourselves, moral autonomy. In this case, we sense the vote to which we have to submit as conscience. Moral progress occurs when we no longer simply accept the commands of an outer or inner authority, but try to recognize the reason why a particular principle of conduct should work as a motive. This is the advance from morality based on authority to conduct based on moral insight. 
At this level of morality, we consider the needs of moral life and let this knowledge determine our actions. Such needs are the greatest possible good for all humanity, cultural progress or the moral evolution of humanity to ever greater perfection, and the realization of individual moral goals grasped by pure intuition. The greatest possible good for all humanity will be understood in different ways by different people. Everyone who acknowledges this principle strives to do whatever in their opinion most promotes the good of humanity. When my time comes, I want to say that I've used my experience, my passions, my talents for the greater good to know that I was a steward of my good fortune. I have an unquenchable curiosity about people. My calling is to tell stories through filmmaking. It's a powerful medium, pervasive, influential. I recently produced a film, Homeless Karaoke, that was shot here in Los Angeles, not far from where I live. It tells the story of a former homeless man, Tony Stallworth, a man making a difference downtown, right where he is. I learned you don't have to go to faraway places to serve people. That can be done right in your own backyard. To make a difference through my work and my life, leadership is essential. I'm trying to lead in such a way that people, whether they're part of my crew or those who see my films, will be encouraged, challenged, and hopefully in some way, changed. Both of the principle of good for all and cultural progress are based on the mental picture. That is, how one relates the content of moral ideas to specific experiences. The highest moral principle springs from the source of pure intuition and only afterward finds a relation to life. Here the decision as what is to be willed proceeds from a different source than the previous examples. Those who favor the ethical principle of the good of all will ask first what their ideals contribute to the good. Those who favor cultural progress will ask first what their ideals contribute to culture. Yet there is a higher way that does not start from one definite single ethical goal in each case, but sees a certain value in all moral principles and in each case asks whether this or that principle is the most important. In certain circumstances the progress of culture will be the right principle. In others the promotion of the good of all. And in a third situation, the promotion of my own well-being is the right goal. In conceptual intuition, all other motives retreat from the leading position and the ideal content alone motivates the action. Spirituality. What is spirituality? This is something that, this is a really loaded word, spirituality, but I'll break it down in, a, in a, my own definition of spirituality. And that simply means relying on your own intuition, relying on your own innate abilities and your own innate powers. Everybody here has immense powers beyond their beliefs. And everybody here could literally change the world, but first they have to change the world inside of them. And you can't go beyond, uh, you can't bring about any type of change in the world without understanding yourself, without understanding your own true innate powers. The world would, would the society really would, would lead you to believe that you are marginalized in some way, that you aren't uh, the number one authority in your life, but you are the number one authority. You are the center of the universe. You have immense powers, but you have to realize that first before you bring about any external change. So spirituality is crucial. Spirituality of, bring, of bringing your mind and your body and your spirit together and realizing that. And when you, come, when, when you cultivate that awareness, that understanding of what you're all about, then your power is infinite and you could do anything. You could do anything, literally.